These tariffs are meant to uh, discourage uh, imports of these critical materials and goods from China. They're so targeted that ultimately the effect is that it creates certain winners and losers. You know, as an economist, we're looking at what the impact is on inflation, on growth. These tariffs are probably not going to go away. They would likely be implemented uh, going forward. A new offensive in the trade war between the United States and China is delayed. Steep new tariffs on imports from China were meant to kick in on August 1st. Now the U.S. Trade Representative Office postponed the measures. With me here to discuss is Bernard Yeros from Oxford Economics. Bernard, these tariffs were announced with a big fanfare by President Biden. Could it be that the United States is backing down? These tariffs, uh, you know, they represent a turn in uh, policy, especially industrial policy here in the U.S. Uh, it's now I, I wouldn't I still wouldn't expect that these uh, tariffs will go away. They'll probably be implement, implemented uh, later on, uh, because, you know, if we look at this administration, they are clearly taking a carrot and stick approach to supporting strategic sectors in the U.S., especially the semiconductors uh, sector uh, and other sectors that are related to uh, the clean energy transition. So, you know, more importantly, you we've seen over the past couple of years a lot of federal tax incentives for uh, domestic manufacturing of semiconductors. Um, and also for uh, the production of clean energy technologies here in the U.S. Um, so that was more of the carrot to encourage businesses to invest in those areas where we want to have less dependence uh, on China. These tariffs, they're what we would call the stick, you know, to reduce, you know, using more force to reduce our dependency uh, uh, on China in those areas. These tariffs were meant to were announced to go in effect on August 1st, but now um, there's been news that it will be delayed. But what could be the holdup? Could it be that the Biden administration is stalling or what can hold up um, a tariff imposition like that? It's potential, you know, uh, you know, there probably there could be some uh, it's tough to know exactly what's holding up, but I, you know, I know that these tariffs were were there was an interesting uh, phase in of these tariffs. You know, they don't phase in right away uh, in their entirety. So there were certain, uh, you know, some of the the tariffs on ener on batteries for energy storage, for example, don't kick in until uh, until you know more than a year from now. So uh, the the effect really was. Um, you know, the effect really for this year was very minor. Um, the, the the tariffs really don't come into full effect until 2025 uh, and, and 2026, where all of the products that have been targeted will be facing these, these higher tariffs. And especially when it comes to uh, batteries for energy storage, uh, those tariffs were not going to come into effect until 2026. So it, it's tough to say, but um, I... I, I don't want to speculate, but I, I still see, you know, th this is, you know, these tariffs are probably not going to go away and they would likely be implemented uh, going forward. Just again, because it's very much in keeping with uh, the pivot towards industrial policy and towards supporting strategic sectors here in the U.S. Right. So what Biden announced was uh, new tariffs, including a 100 percent tariff on electric vehicles, a 50 percent tariff on solar cells and a 25 percent tariff on steel and aluminum. Now, you already started explaining this carrot and stick approach, but could you briefly explain how these tariffs are meant to work? So the, these tariffs are meant to uh, discourage uh, imports of these of these critical materials and goods uh, from China. Uh, the main impact is uh, so it, it's going to you know it's it's going to lead to di uh, trade diversions. Will for a period of time until we produce more of these goods here at home, uh, we'll, we'll likely import less from uh, China. But other countries uh, would benefit. You know, other countries that are uh, major producers of these goods, you know, will benefit in the interim. Uh, you know, as an economist, we're looking at what the impact is on inflation, on growth. And, uh, you know, given that this we're only looking at 18 billion dollars worth worth of tariffs um, and a lot of these are not really directly, uh, uh, 
you know, going to impact the consumer, the U.S. consumer, which is the lifeblood of the U.S. economy. The inflationary impact and also the growth impact is very much on the margins. It's only, uh, you know, a, you know, a, a basis point. To, it adds only a basis point to inflation and subtracts uh, growth by a similar amount. Uh, but, you know, I would say that these are if you look at the, the, the magnitude of the tariff increases, they're big. But they're largely symbolic because already we import, the U.S. imports very little, uh, very few EVs and, and certain other um, of these t- uh, targeted uh, goods from China already. So it, it's the, the impact really is, is it's, it's more symbolic rather than uh, in practicality, it's not going to have much of an effect. Now, you say it's symbolic, but there is a study from the Federal Reserve Bank of New York that found that Trump's 2018 U.S. tariffs cost the typical household an additional $419 per year. Now, that's significant, especially at a time when U.S. citizens are worried about inflation, for example. So wouldn't you agree that people will feel these tariffs? Yeah, uh, these tariffs, it depends on what tariffs, uh, you know, what goods are being targeted. So if we're targeting consumer goods, those are that is going to, you know, to, that that's going to show up in consumer price indices. Um, it's going to show up. It, it's going to show up as a hit to people's wallets. Uh, but again, you know, when we're talking a, a lot of these tariffs, we're, they're they're focused on semiconductors, on battery storages. So these are really costs more for producers, for businesses, and in very, very targeted sectors. Again, we're talking about the high-tech manufacturing um, as well as mineral mineral sector. So it's, again, it's the pass-through from these tariffs to inflation as uh, as felt by consumers is not as, uh, as great as, you know, we saw in the prior administration. And this is where we've done a lot of work looking ahead. So, for example, if uh, former President Donald Trump does win, and we get blanket tariffs. That's you know no good import. You know no import will be spared, and that's where you're going to see meaningful impacts on inflation, which will hurt real disposable incomes of uh, of households who would, as a result, pull back on their spending. So again, it really matters on you know the nature of the tariffs, what they're targeting, and how much does that pass through to the consumer, which is the engine of the U.S. economy. Yeah, now you already mentioned that Trump announced he would impose a 10% uh, blanket tariff on any imports and also a 60% tariff on all Chinese imports. So tariffs mm-hmm. are a hot button issue in this election. And the aim of these tariffs, uh, the stated aim is to bring back industry, like for example, the solar and chip industry to the United States. Now, do we know if tariffs really succeed at doing that? So it, it's it seems like the best approach has really been uh, has really been these tax incentives, and we're already seeing the results of this clearly in the data. So by providing tax incentives that make it uh, you know that reduce the cost of investing in uh, you know semiconductor uh, facilities here locally or in battery plants, um, you are seeing that already. If we right now we the U.S. is in the midst of a factory uh, construction boom. If uh, that's really been supporting business, uh, overall business investment, um, and it's very concentrated. It's in factories related to um, uh, computer uh, equipment, uh, computer electrical and electronic equipment. And this again speaks to a lot of the, the tax the tax incentives that have been uh, provided to semiconductors um, and also clean energy technologies. You know, tariffs, and if we look at the dollar amounts of these tax incentives, you know, it's going to be around a trillion dollars over the next uh, decade. So that's significant. That's and that's significantly higher than um, the tariffs that we're seeing now, uh, you know, under consideration with Biden. Those have much more of an impact. Um, tariffs, again, you know, it's, you know, it, it's it'll if, if it's too tar- if it's too targeted in a single country, you just get uh, trade diversions. So you don't real necessarily reduce. You may not necessarily bring back some of those manufacturing here to the U.S., uh, especially where 
you know, unit labor costs are still uh, unfavorable relative to under, uh, other countries. Um, but, you know, when we consider, you know, when we're really considering the blanket tariffs, 10 percent tariffs on everyone and 60 percent on China, it's it's really the inflationary impact that is the most important to consider. You know, it adds it does add several tenths of a percent to uh, inflation, you know, in 2026 so over the next presidential term. Uh, it forces the Federal Reserve to be a bit less, to be more cautious in terms of easing monetary policy. Um, and it does show up, you know, it is a hit to the wallets of uh, U.S. households. Now, one of the reasons uh, tariffs on China are such a popular um, buzzword during this election uh, campaign is certainly because the United States is running a big trade deficit with China at the moment. Last year, it imported $427 billion in goods from China, but it only exported $148 billion worth of goods to China. Now, looking at the Chinese perspective, uh, what can we expect? Any sort of retaliation? Historically, what we've seen is that there, China will retaliate, but they will retaliate less than, you know, in a less than proportional fashion. So if we hit China with 60 percent tariffs, our view is most likely that they would respond with only 40 percent tariffs. Uh, so it wouldn't be tit for tat. You know, they wouldn't match us uh, one for one. They would probably take other uh, other measures to offset the effects or to, you know, to respond to uh, any trade actions by us. You know, there could be a buy, you know, there would be a bias for currency weakening. Um, they could take uh, other non-tariff measures such as res restricting tourism uh, uh, to the U.S., Uh, but when it comes to the tariffs, it, it's it's always been less than proportional, but they could take other non-tariff uh, actions uh, against us. Now, you already spoke about the impact that these tariffs could have on the U.S. economy and for U.S. consumers. But let's take a look at the global picture, because after the challenging post-pandemic years, global trade has been on a road to recovery somewhat with cooling inflation and rising demand. Now, the IMF has warned that trade restrictions could shrink the global GDP by 7 percent. With this uptick in tariffs coming from the U.S., would that be felt around the world? So if we just consider the 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 Biden tariffs, the, the 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 tariffs announced by Biden, again, these are very small. They it'll create they're so targeted that it ultimately the effect is that it creates winners and certain winners and losers. So um obviously China would stand to lose the most as a result of you know, you know, reduced uh, exports to the US. Uh, but you'd see other countries, uh, especially in South, uh, especially in Asia, that are big producers, for example, of batteries, especially for um, not for EV, not for use of uh, electric vehicles, but for energy storage. Some of these other countries in Asia could benefit as you know, as it because it takes time for us to build up capacity in these sectors uh, that are being targeted. So other countries that already have you know that are already uh, front runners in terms of manufacturing of these strategic goods, they could benefit, um, especially those outside China in Asia. Bernard Yaros, thank you so much for talking to us. My pleasure.